Welcome to the Perspectives on Healthcare podcast, where members of the medical community from different roles, venues, and locations share their unique perspectives on quality healthcare, its future, and how to improve it. Now, from the Your Keynote Speaker Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, here is your host, Rob Oliver. Welcome to Perspectives on Healthcare. I appreciate you being with me today. My perspective today comes from Gunther Mueller. He is an optimal health strategist in Anthem, Arizona, just outside of Phoenix. He is the executive director of Get Well Scottsdale and is a member of Generation X. Gunther, welcome to the show. Hey, Rob. Thanks so much for having me here. Excited about what we're going to talk about. Absolutely. Let's just jump right into it. First question for you is tell me a little bit about yourself and about your role in healthcare. So I've been an entrepreneur for the past 30 years, grew up in Queens, New York, moved out to Colorado and uh, eventually settled here in Arizona. Um, Been involved in the medical field for the last decade or so and uh, have worked with over 300 medical professionals and getting them trained and up to speed on optimal aging or optimal health and uh, very different than the traditional allopathic model. So I've uh, owned medical clinics, I've employed physicians, I have uh, helped physicians get the training that they need to uh, kind of change the paradigm in their practice and really help patients actually uh, focus on optimal health rather than not being sick. Okay. That's a different concept. Tell me about the difference between optimal health and not being sick. So it's truly a paradigm shift, right? Uh, I'm going to come from the perspective that the body has the innate intelligence to heal itself when it is given the raw materials that it needs to do so. And I'm talking about deficiencies from everything from vitamin D3 to particular hormones, thyroid deficiency, Uh, dietary imbalances, all kinds of, you know, iodine deficiency. There's all kinds of things that we can point to in the medical literature that has been ignored, let's say, by the traditional Western medical model. Okay. What is your definition of quality health care? So to me, quality health care is following the rule that prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. Okay, so when you approach a situation and a patient is presenting with symptoms, and uh, look, the number one symptom that patients present with today is fatigue. They're tired all the time, just not feeling good in their body. It's the good healthcare takes the view of determining the root cause as to why the body is expressing itself with those symptoms. And we're not treating the symptom. We need to treat the root cause because when we treat the root cause, we will see that a myriad of symptoms seem to resolve at the same time. So what you're saying is that if we, if we fix the root of the problem, we're not going to just fix a symptom, but we'll fix the rest of the symptoms that go with that. Uh, Can you give me an example of quality healthcare? Yeah, an example in in our world is that we look at lab work in a different way. And in general, it's to say that normal is not optimal. So when you do your lab work, let's say once a year, and you get all those results back and everything is in the normal range, I want you to know that there's no science behind that range. It is just the average of the population. So if you're in the 50, 60-year-old range, the expected range is that of other 50, 60 year olds. And just because you're in range does not mean that you're optimally healthy. It means that you're just like everybody else. You're normal. But for you to feel healthy and vibrant and full of energy and have good skin, good hair, good nails, you know, good muscle tone, be at your ideal weight and just feel amazing when you wake up in the morning and sleep well at night. I mean, 60% of Americans don't sleep through the night. It's a real problem. But, you know, what? Look, just look what's being prescribed. It is not treating the root cause, it is treating the symptom. And so good healthcare, number one, would start at looking at lab work through a different lens 
and trying to determine what needs to be optimized in order for the patient to actually feel better. Okay. And yeah, there is someone who has quite wisely said that normal is a setting on your washing machine. It's not a descriptor <laughs> for, for humans. Yeah. What do you, oh, go ahead. Yeah. What's happened is though we've accepted normal as normal. Right. So we've accepted you know, as a society that, hey, you know, you're over 30 now, so you're not a spring chicken anymore. And so why would you expect to feel like you were 25? Because now you're 35 and then you're 45 and then you're 55. And so we have just become accustomed to aging is associated with disease. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. You do not have to succumb to everything that everyone else is succumbing to if you take different actions with regard to your health care. Okay. What do you wish people understood about your role in healthcare? Because I had never heard of an optimal health strategist before. What, I mean, what, would you, what do you wish people knew about that? Well, what I wish they knew about it is that you can come to a complex field like medicine and not having to have had been trained, let's say, in the traditional way. I'm perfectly capable reading a medical study just like someone going through medical school. It's if you have the time and the attention and the acumen to read that, to converse about medical literature and really understand you know, who funded the study? What was the intention of the study? Where did it come from? What is the objective of the study? And really understanding why it was done. And I, I'll, I'll share this coin because it is my perspective that if you want to know the truth in medicine, you need to follow the money. Because a lot of times good things are not done because they're either not patentable you cannot patent anything that is in nature. You can't patent anything that the human body produces. And so what we find is really a pharmaceutical culture that has changed the molecular structure of many things to get a patent on them so that they can sell them for high dollar stuff. And it's not really the best reality for patients. It uh, may relieve a symptom, but as you see from the TV commercials every night, there's a myriad of side effects that could potentially get produced from taking some of these substances versus there is a very natural approach to giving the body the nutrients and the minerals and the elements that it's just missing. When you give the body those things, magically the body knows what to do with it. That innate intelligence, it knows how to heal itself, but we never really give it the opportunity to do so. So are you talking about replacing medicine with um, what you're doing or supplementing medicine with what you're doing? Yeah, I, I'm a, you know, if I was in an accident today and I wound up in the emergency room, I would, I'm totally impressed with emergency medicine and surgery. I mean, there's definitely a need and a place for this advanced medical, uh, you know, inventions and, and medicines and drugs and all that. I'm not against them. I'm against the part that says that, oh, we're going to put you on this prescription and you're going to be on it for the rest of your life. That is where I think a better solution needs to be that needs to be found because the average senior citizen in the United States is literally on about five to six prescription drugs for life. Okay. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate it. What excites you about the future of healthcare? You know, the future, I look at it and uh, I've always been a fan of Star Trek Right. And I remember Dr. Bones on there having this little device, you know, and uh, just being able to scan and to diagnose and then just finding treatments that literally like came out of the wall, almost robotic and knowing exactly what to do to fix the ailment or to heal a wound or all that. So I believe that there's amazing advancements coming in. Uh, I personally am very much into biohacking, looking at uh, pulsed electromagnetic field stuff, looking at uh, fitness ways of getting the body fit in much less time than traditional, let's say, gym time. Um, I, I think there are a lot of advancements going in the biohacking space from an energetic, from a frequency-based uh, type of medicine to really understanding the body in its holistic way of really body, mind, and spirit, and not just treating the body from the physical aspect, but really a more holistic approach to how the body actually functions. Okay. What is one thing 
that medical professionals can start doing today to improve the quality of healthcare? I think the one thing that medical professionals could do is to really uh, maintain an open mind. And that is um, cumbersome sometimes because of licensing requirements or the status quo. And uh, a lot of medical professionals, in my experience, are very afraid to step out of the box because they don't want to be ostracized or criticized for maybe doing things a different way. Even though they may believe it may be a better way to go, they don't do it because they don't want to be singled out. And that's very unfortunate because, you know, scientific advancement and uh, medical treatment advancement, I mean, there always has to be a leader, a leader. So I look, you know, back to people like Thomas Edison or Tesla or different people that were leaders in their field and they tried different things and what I see, unfortunately, in the medical community is that people get ostracized for not staying within the uh, standard of care. Okay. Uh, listen, Gunther Mueller, thank you so much for being here. I will definitely put links to uh, your clinic in the show notes. And thank you as a, an optimal health strategist for sharing your perspective on healthcare. Thanks for listening to Perspectives on Healthcare. Visit PerspectivesOnHealthcare.com to learn more about Rob Oliver or to subscribe so you never miss an episode. If this podcast was valuable, we'd appreciate a review on iTunes. Or if you tell a friend or coworker about the show, that would be helpful too. Join us again next time for more Perspectives on Healthcare.